What's up everybody? My name is Mickey Gaminol, I'm with Gaminol Tutors. Uh, this is take two of my fun little card game to pass the time. Um, so I am a math tutor here in Vegas. If anybody needs math help, uh, feel free to give me a call. Uh, my number is on my website at gaminoltutors.com. So um, basically while everybody's kind of trapped indoors, sheltering in place or what have you, um, here's a really simple game to ensure that your kids aren't kind of losing their minds as far as education goes. Um, this is something I do with my students all the time um, and it's something they kind of enjoy. It turns into a bit of a reward like if we get through this really tough math part we can play cards at the end. So uh, the rules of the game very simple. Um, spades and clubs are going to be positive and then hearts and diamonds are gonna be negative. And what's cool about this game is you can do it with any operation, um, even exponents, parentheses, you can throw in order of operations down the road. Uh, but to start, we're just going to use addition, right? It's kind of how you wanna start anyway. So, remember these rules. Positive are gonna be all the black cards, spades and clubs. Negative are gonna be hearts and diamonds. And you can call them, you know, 14s or whatever. Um, or you can just call them all tens, whatever works for you. But we'll take a card completely at random here. I'll shuffle it later on. Not cheating. Ooh. There we go. All right, so one card, two card. So I'll even show my students first before I look at them so they get a chance to write it down. And then we kind of race. So five and four. So the five was positive, so it'll be five. And since we're doing addition, we're going to plus. The four was negative, so we'll do negative four. Now what I do with my students is I always make sure that they get the idea of positive and negative numbers before we start. Um, so you want to relate it to them. Um, if kids are really big into video games, um, you can say like fire Pokemon are going to be, I guess, red, negatives and water Pokemon will be black, positive, right? So if you have a fire Pokemon and a water Pokemon, they don't get along. So the idea is they're going to clash, right? Um, you can do this with sports teams. Um, Utes and BYU is always a favorite in Utah. Um, I like to do Jazz versus Lakers um, or whatever, you know, whatever too. You could do Dodge versus Toyota, it doesn't matter. But you gotta get it clear to them that the kid that these two numbers do not get along. They will clash. So that way we know the five and the four can't work together, right? Five water Pokemon and four Pokemon, four fire Pokemon aren't going to create nine fire water Pokemon. They're actually going to subtract from each other. They're going to clash. So you have to subtract. And the cool thing about playing cards is they actually have the number of shapes on them. So you can say five is one, two, three, four, five, and four is gonna be one, two, three, four. So you're gonna take these four away from this five, and which one's gonna win, which one's bigger? So the, you can clearly see here that the five has more shapes than the four. So you know that the answer is going to be positive. You don't know what the answer is yet because you haven't done the subtraction, but you know it's going to be positive because you know that the number, the a uh, larger number, uh, whether it be positive or negative, is always going to win in the addition problem. So, um, which one's bigger here? Five, so therefore it's positive. We take four away from five, so you take one, two, three, four. How many are left? Just the one, right? So, it's going to be positive one. Cool? Now, that one's pretty easy. And this is going to be really easy for kids who are far advanced. This is going to be mostly for kids who are low, but what you can do is even as these kids get older, you can incorporate more things to this game. Um, so let's try another one. Two positives, too easy, right? Seven plus four. Seven plus four, now again, now we have two sets of water Pokemon. So water Pokemon get along, so they're going to create 11 water Pokemon. Is it gonna be positive or negative? Well, it's gonna be positive because there's no negatives involved in this problem at all. So since it's two positives, they're gonna create a larger positive. That's how addition works, right? Boom, 
One positive, one negative. Three and negative two. I'll give you a second. I'm sure you guys mostly have it down already. So positive three plus, and then I'll change colors just for consistency, negative one. Now the question is, who's gonna win? Well, same deal as up here. Three is bigger than one, so positive is gonna win. But we actually have to do the subtraction to find the solution. So three, take away one is three, take away one, how many you have left? Just two. Cool. And then last one, six and four. Negative six, positive four, right? Sweet, I was hoping a negative would win one of these. So negative six plus positive four. Aha, so now what's going on? So we, let's look at these two. Let's look at these two cards, especially for the younger kids. These two cards, which one has more shapes? Is it this guy or is it this guy? It's gonna be this guy, right? Yeah, cool, this guy. Six, how many more shapes does this have than this one? Well, to figure that out, what you do is you take this away from this. So this is four, you're gonna count out four of these. One, two, three, four, those ones don't count. How many remain? Just two. Positive two or negative two? Well, we already decided that this is the larger number, so therefore, this is gonna be the solution. Cool? Sweet, so that's something that you can do. Um, one thing that I would suggest is going even a little faster. All right, so if you guys wanna race me, now's your chance. You may want a pen and paper. All right, so we're gonna do, oh well, wait, I can't look. All right. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, seven, Eight. Yeah, four questions. All right, two pair. Uh, all right, so first question is going to be this. Second question is going to be this. Third question is going to be this. Fourth question is going to be this. And remember, we're doing only addition. So we have negative nine plus six. We have negative eight plus one. Negative seven plus negative five, positive seven plus negative five, and negative 10 plus negative two. Cool, negative nine plus positive six. These two don't get along, which one wins? The negative does, so it's gonna be a negative three. These two again, eight and one, don't get along. The negative wins, because it's the larger number. Negative seven. Seven and negative five, these two don't get along. So which one wins? The seven, so it's gonna be a positive two. All right, negative 10, negative two. These two do get along. So we're gonna get negative 12. Cool? Uh, I got a feeling most of you guys beat me, but, um, you know, I was giving it a, giving it the try with, with the internets and everything like that. So you never know how it's gonna, how it's gonna turn out. All right, so let's switch over to subtraction. Cool, now the rule with subtraction is you actually have to move the minus sign. So I'm gonna write this all in red. So what you do is, here's the operation. What you're doing is you're making that second number into a subtraction. So we'll call this like my subtraction machine here. And we turn a subtraction problem into an addition problem. That's actually how the way, the way math books will tell you how to do it. Um, and so you change your subtraction problem into an addition problem. Let's take two cards at random. Boom. Six and negative one. We'll start, we'll say negative one and six because that's easier for me right now. Negative one minus six, right? Positive six. So negative one, take away positive six. What you do is you take that subtraction and put it on that six. So you get negative one plus negative six, all right? So this is one quick step to change every subtraction problem with integers into an addition problem. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna make it as simple as possible because especially with like, as you get into upper level math, you want to think as simply as possible and do things one step at a time. That's why computers work so well. They're all just ones and zeros, right? 
So they don't actually think about what you're trying to convey in your essay. They just think, oh, he types this letter, that's zero one or whatever. And it just makes it really simple. And that's what you want. That's what you want with math is simplicity. So negative one plus negative six, and we're right back to our addition rules. So these two what? They get along, right? They don't fight. These are both fire Pokemon or whatever, um, two negative numbers. So negative one, negative six, they're going to combine to create a bigger number, which is going to be negative seven. Cool? All right, next one. Negative seven, positive one. So negative seven minus positive one equals what? So again, we're gonna change our subtraction problem into an addition problem. So we're gonna put that negative right over there and put make it into an add. Negative seven plus negative one equals negative eight. Good? Hopefully you're all keeping up. So now we've created two games. And like I say, what te math teachers do as they go through and teach this sort of stuff, teach really anything, all your algebra functions, everything like that, you'll see a teacher go like, what is three plus four? And then the first kid to answer that obviously is the best at math. Now that's not necessarily true. They're the, mo the one who memorizes the best. They know their math facts the best, but that doesn't make them the best at math. However, if your kid can be better at saying what three plus four is before all the other kids, he's gonna think he's best at math, which really kind of makes him or her the best at math. Confidence is gonna breed that competence, right? So, let's do some more. Um, we're gonna do another eight, just to keep our minds fresh. Four, seven, eight. All right, boom. Um, these two. This is subtraction, so we're gonna say the card on top is the first term, and the second card is the second term. Boom, first term, second term. First term, second term, first term, second term. And cha, first term, second term. Cool? All right, so we have negative three minus negative one. We have positive eight minus negative three. We have two minus nine, good one. And we have negative 10 minus two. All right, cool. So negative three, take away negative one. Now when we distribute the subtraction problem to make it into an addition problem, boom, there's already a negative there. So what do we do? We take these two lines and put them together like this. We turn them into a positive, right? So negative three minus negative one is going to be negative three plus one. So we've turned them all, we're gonna turn all of these into addition problems. Negative eight minus negative three, we're gonna make this into a plus because that's two negatives, eight plus three. Two minus nine, nothing to change there. Oh wait, yeah, there is. We change these into addition problems. So it becomes two plus negative nine, cool? And then negative two minus two, negative 10, plus negative two. Woohoo. Cool. So now we have all our problems set up. We can go through and solve. All right, negative three plus one. It's, uh, you have three, you take away one of them. These two don't get along. So you know they're going to fight, so there's going to be some subtraction here. Three take away one is two remaining. My question is, positive or negative two? We look at the larger term, and we see that it's negative. So the answer is negative two. Eight plus three. Now, which one's larger, the positive or the negative in this question? Well, there's no negative, right? It's eight plus three. So we're just going to say eight plus three is positive 11. So you don't even have to figure out which one's larger if they're both the same, right? They're going to work together to create a bigger number. So negative plus a negative makes a bigger negative. Positive plus a positive makes a bigger positive. All right. 2 plus negative 9. Ooh, this is a good one. So these two don't get along. So we know the 2 and the 9 right here are going to fight. Now, I know these both look positive, and they both are. But remember, we're doing a subtraction problem. So we count the 2. We take 2 away from our 9. How many are left? I'll give you a second. 7. Cool? Now, last question. Is it going to be a positive 7 or a negative 7? 
going to be a negative 7. Cool? Negative 10, take away 2. These two, oh, this one turned into this question down here. Remember, we turned all our subtraction problems into addition problems. Negative 10 plus negative 2. These are the same question, they're just written differently. Well, it's uh, 10 and 2, that makes 12. These two get along because they're both negative numbers, so that's negative 12. Cool? Good work, everybody. Hope everybody's picking that up. Let me circle this one just for, just so I can. Ta-da! All right, so, um, and that's what I'm saying. What you do is you simply just draw four cards, or eight, or whatever, show them to your kids, and then boom, it's off to the races, right? So kids aren't just running in circles screaming, and parents aren't just running in circles screaming. This will give everybody a little something to do in the afternoon. Um, and then as soon as they're bored, well, you say, all right, next we're doing subtraction, or next we're doing multiplication. Or you can even say, we're going to throw in some, some kings and queens and stuff. And kings are worth 20 or whatever. And another thing you can always do is you can just change it up and boom, boom, look at that. If I do an addition problem with three cards, let's try that one real quick. And then we'll be done, all right? So, our last one, we're going to do three card addition. Boom. Cool? So, completely random. So, the way I do it, I say, I'm going to throw some face cards in here. The way I do it, I say face cards are jacks are going to be 11s, queens are going to be 12s, kings are going to be 13s, and most kids already know that aces are one. And if they don't, you can usually look at an ace and tell that it's a one because it just has one shape. All right. And if you guys have any questions about this game or any improvements, uh, go ahead and shoot my Facebook a message. Let me know. Let me know how to change it up, all right? All right. Three completely random cards, and then we're done. Five, four, and king. Now we're doing all addition, so we know we can write plus signs to begin with. So it's positive five, negative four. And king was worth 11, 12, 13, right? Cool. So, um, five plus negative four plus 13. Um, you can rewrite this however you want, um, but the, the math truth is you're supposed to go from left to right. I know in order of operations, it's PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This might be a little advanced for some people. <laughs> but um, these two you do at the same time and these two you do at the same time because they're actually inverses of each other. So multiplication and division are actually kind of the same operation. They're just written a little funny. And addition and subtraction are actually the same operation as you saw earlier, right? We just change those subtraction problems into addition problems. So um, we'll go from left to right. What's five take away four? Well, first, is it five plus four or five minus four? And we know because we're really smart math geniuses that it's going to be five take away four, which leaves us with one. And then we're gonna add 13. Cool. One plus 13, 14. Positive 14, you betcha, because they're both positive. Sweet. Well, I hope that uh, at least entertains you for a couple minutes. And honestly, if you incorporate this card game into your kid's day at some point, um, even have like siblings racing against each other or whatever, it's probably going to completely change their math life, hopefully. Um, if not, send them my way, we can do some math stuff online and I can make sure that they're super confident going into the next year. Um, hope everybody's staying safe out there and thank you for your time.